Hi you guys, welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker and today we're going to have a little crafty chat about things that I do that make me appear to be a productive knitter or crocheter. Um, specifically today we're going to talk about preparation and how I streamline in particularly like the idea of my travel projects. Um, so one of the things that over and over again, since I started my channel and even in my personal life with people, I craft with in person on the regular, you know, friends, personal ministry members and stuff. Like I get asked a lot about how I get so much done. And I just, I want to put this in quotes at least once because I don't feel like I get that much done. I have great intentions and I'm always running 15 steps behind myself. I do not feel like I get nearly as much done as everybody thinks I do. But there are times where the proof is in the output and there are times where I can be a functional crafter uh, or a productive crafter. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you in how to streamline the experience for yourself and taking stress out of projects. We're specifically talking about my travel projects. So for me, number one, a travel project is a mindless project. If you have a pattern, it's something where you just need to be reminded periodically of what you're doing. Like I just finished, um, I think it's called the treasure hunt shawl and it's a crocheted open lace pattern for 50 rows. And then there's six transition rows. It's a two row repeat for that. And I just needed to be reminded real quick of where, where that started. Um, I didn't need to, I didn't need the pattern to read it. I just needed to be reminded of how to start the first transition row. And then I knew exactly what to do. Like it was easily memorized. The first time you did it, you knew exactly what you were doing. Um, something like that, I would still take the pat, leave the pattern in my project bag, but, and yeah, you know, like in this one, I could put it on a clipboard in my big totes that I made, I could put in a clipboard, but just fold it up and stick it in there, a printed copy or, you know, have it on your phone or something just so you get the reminder. I would consider that still a travel type project because it's 97% mindless. I don't need to read anything, see anything, think about anything. It's just a way to keep my hands busy when I'm sitting in the car and I don't start backseat driving my husband. Which I am very prone to do. I will not lie. <laughs> I, I'm a horrible backseat driver with him. But... I can craft in my own business and everybody has a much happier time in the car when I do that. So yeah, keep it simple. Keep it super simple. Right now, my primary car project is doing the corner to corner scrap squares and my scrap granny squares that I've been sharing with you guys all year. That's, that's been my car project. I've done some shawls like my half circle shawl or, um, the, I can't remember the name of it now. Kalisha's pattern that was popular two years ago. Everybody made it. I've made 900 of it. Anyway. That's going to drive me crazy because I have, I, like, I'm surprised there's not a printout of the pattern sitting here on this table right now because I've made this so many times. I have like 15 copies of it printed floating around the house. Anyway, I've done a lot of projects like that where, you know, I know the pattern. It's easily memorized. I don't, don't need to take anything with me. I definitely don't need to take anything with me to do a corner to corner square or a granny square at this point. Especially, I've done more than 106 and more than 56 of them just this year alone. So, yeah, like this is my my project, and I I while I have my big basket of my single skeins or my leftover skeins or my partial skeins, 
I'll drop one or two in my travel bag, which right now I'm using this wonderful bag from Christy Hudson over at Tea Dottles. I've got my extra size eye hook in there. It, it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. I can easily grab this and take this around the house with me. I can take this out to the car with me. I got 15 seconds. I can pull it out and do a couple stitches. If I'm on the phone, stuck on the phone, I can easily grab that, do a couple stitches. If I, you know, have to stop at a doctor's office to pick something up or I'm waiting on a prescription refill or something, I can walk around with that while I wait. But what makes this so easy is this little bag. And I have at least 10 of these packed and sitting around my house. I've got, I know, three on my desk right now. And this is why this works for me. And this might not be the perfect notions pouch for you. The combination of things in here might not be the perfect notions pouch for you. But the, I, the how I use travel projects and, and everything, this is what works for me. And it works for both knitting and crochet. So number one, I have a pair of scissors. This is not my favorite pair of scissors. I do prefer the little squeezy snips. I have over the years gotten some really good folding scissors. Uh, I do really like the little metal embroidery snips. But as I've said, I'm a huge printed pattern person. I do prefer printed patterns. So I have a packet of post-it notes and a pen. I think this bag actually has two pens in it because I got handed one. I think this is a must. Um, normally, I would not use something that is as scented as this one, but hand cream of some sort. A quick absorbing hand cream that does not leave. I hate it, especially living in the southeast. It's sweaty and hot down here. It's humid down here. I don't like any creams that leave a film over your skin and you're sweating under that oily layer and you, it, it, it's really uncomfortable to me. So I like something that fully absorbs very, very quickly. I normally don't use something as scented as this, but not necessarily unscented. When you're sitting there counting stitches and thinking about what you're doing or you're writing around, I find I mindlessly chew my lips real bad. So I always have chapstick. Welcome to neurotic carry. When I say I'm neurotic, <laughs> like I said, I'm kind of like a little chihuahua running around. Uh, so these are number 16 Susan Bates steel yarn needles. These are my preferred needles in general for weaving in ends. I really love wool needles. And like I said, I'm going to put the Hobie ones to the test, but I have had a problem in the past with yarn needles breaking on me. Um, the big wool needles with the, the loopy tops. I really want these to work out because I really love those when they work well. But I don't have a whole lot of faith in them right now. So the last two items I have in here, number one, I have wax dental floss. And this is to make lifelines in my knitting or if there's any reason, like I drop a stitch and I need to like drop anything back and loop anything or do anything. I want to have something that works. I do really love using dental floss as a lifeline in general in my knitting. It, it glides and slides straight out of the yarn. I, I love the way it works. Also, if you're crocheting and you don't want to use a stitch marker to mark up your piece in the round and you use the looped yarn method, this also can come in handy if you don't have any scrap yarn in your project bag that day. I always keep some type of dental floss in there. And once again, these all have other purposes are just handy to have uh, in general. I don't really think of these as a, I would carry these in my purse if I weren't carrying them in a project bag. Like these are the same things I would be carrying around in my purse. The other thing I use is some form of a locking stitch marker. Now, 
these are not my favorite ones. I do like these. Uh, these are okay, especially with my crochet. I've done a lot of crochet in the car recently, so I don't mind having these in there. I do prefer the light bulb metal safety pins because I think they work better for knitting. But these work for knitting or for crochet. And I, I think stitch markers are something you should just always have in your bag. Now, if you are one of the people who keep, who want to keep socks on the go in your car, or that is your go-to travel project or project to travel with, you would definitely want to make some modifications to this, like definitely using the light bulb markers instead of the big plastic ones, just because you don't want to create gaps. Um, yeah, there, there are things you could easily shift around with this, but... I have 10 of these and they stay packed at all times. I can literally grab one out of my basket or off my desk and drop it in whatever project I am walking out the door with. There have been cases where I have had two in a project bag at the same time because it was, I just wanted to make sure I had everything in my bag and ready to go. So number one, having a well-packed combination for your notions pouch and having extras that you can just grab and go. I think this is, this streamlines the process. You don't have to buy everything all at once. You don't have to do it all at one time. You can use whatever you have laying around and just parse it out. I know these stitch markers specifically came in a kit, but I have put stitch markers like these in bags or little tins. Um, I just got a single eyeshadow actually in a little tiny tin and stuck stitch markers in it and put it in a new pouch. Um, so just use whatever you have, you know, around. You don't have to go buy anything specialty. Like this is an Ipsy bag that I got with my, my monthly subscription. So, you know, just use what you have. And like, I know a lot of the international flights, my husband comes back with these. Um, there was another one, I, I got like five of the, these Notion pouches somewhere. Um, but yeah, just whatever little bag you have. And just keep it packed, keep it pre-packed. So whatever you can have like, right now this is set up, like this is my travel bag right now. This is what I take in the car, this is what I take, you know, when I go to church, when I'm heading out, you know, but you could be working on something where you're like, you know what? I want to keep working on this. I'm going to take this with me. And you can just stick it in the project bag, grab a notions pouch off your desk or out of your craft room or out of your storage cabinet, wherever you want to keep them to make them easily accessible and just grab it and stick it in your bag. And that way you can always travel. That's the thing though. I call these travel projects and travel bags, but really what these are are my mindless go-to projects when I'm I have a break but not enough to commit to anything which has been a lot of my year this year to be honest like that's why we have so many squares a lot of my days have been I can't quite commit to sitting down and even cranking out two rows on a pattern I have to think about um but when I'm editing a video, I might grab this bag and work on something. When I'm trapped on a phone call on hold, I'll, I'll grab this bag or I'll grab this project out and work on something. Um, so it's one of those like at any given time, I can grab this and take it where I need it. It's a trans easily transportable project that I can work on whenever, wherever, however, in whatever time I have available to work on it. So it's not really like I only work on these in the car. Like these are just, it's it, this type of project is the thing that I just go to when I have that second. I have used dishcloths. That's, you know, I've had just a bag with some cotton in it. And if I had 15 minutes sitting down, I would make a dishcloth or start working on a dishcloth. Or I know like one of my friends is, is doing a whole bunch of scrunchies to donate to the um, school. Um, I 
coat closet. The, the, um, I just totally brain flush. Um, their school has a coat closet where, uh, somebody who might need some shoes or a jacket or something like they can go and get those items. Um, and you have food pantries. This is like a, anyway, she's doing a whole bunch of scrunchies. Uh, that's, and she's doing scraps. So she actually has a, I don't have one over here. Uh, I've got these four by four plastic boxes. She's got one of those that she's got full of elastics. And then she's got her bag that's filled with scraps. And that's like what she just, every time she sits down, she starts working on scrunchie. That's what she's doing with hers. Um, but these, these are the little projects that you just, you, you grab and go. You don't have to think about working on them. You don't think about what you're doing while you're working on them. They're just those kinds of projects. And I think those kinds of projects are very important. Um, especially if you're a non-project monogamous person or you want to be project monogamous, but you're not. Um, I, I find these, because at least you get the satisfaction of a quick thing. And there are a lot of projects where you just, you can't, you can't work on them every time you have an opportunity to sit down and work on something. Um, you know, there are lots of times where I would love to sit down and work on an intricate knit pattern. But the truth is, is I can't sit in the car and read a pattern and talk to my husband and navigate where we're going all at the same time. And, but I do have the ability to make a lemon stitch, lemon peel stitch dishcloth, or I have, I can make a greeny square. So, you know, it's, it's, though that's what I'm talking about when I say my travel projects. They're literally my grab and work on it project. People do socks. I, they'll, they'll, until they hit a, until they hit the heel. And then they'll sit down, they'll do, turn the heel, and then it goes back into their travel bag. And then they work on the next tube on the sock. And I think that's a wonderful, wonderful way to be a productive knitter when it comes to making socks. Because socks can take forever if you just are trying to make socks. And when you, when you do it that way, I think it's a wonderful way of actually being a production knitter and, and producing at the same time, enjoying the production and producing at the same time. So, uh, this is one of the ways where I can fake being, being productive in my crafty life. And it's because I have something like this. Anytime I sit down and need something to do with my hands for 15 seconds, I need a break. I am bored. I can always grab one of these bags and just start working. And with the notions pouch set up the way it is where I've got multiples of these. I can literally just grab it and stick it in a new project bag as I'm going or walking out the door and it can just live in there as I'm moving around, moving the projects around, taking them with me. And the, there, there is no limit to what this project can be as long as it's just something that you can sit down. If you can sit down, get a couple of stitches, not even a full row, just a couple of stitches in, put it back down and be able to pick it right back up when you pick it up again. That's the kind of project this is. That's what, that's what we're talking about in this video. Not, okay, I'm on row one, two, three. Four, five. If you, if you got to spend time thinking about it to figure out where you are, we're not talking about that kind of project. Like literally you can do six stitches, get up and go do something else for a little while, come back, do six more stitches. And when you start filling those random moments of your day like that, it really is surprising how much you can get done, how many of those little moments, you know, instead of taking a smoke break, what you can do is take a five minute crochet break or a two minute crochet break in the course of your day. And I know like as we've quit, that's one of the things that like kind of is helping me bridge that activity gap during the day is I can at least sit down 
and do half a row of something and move on. So, you know, it's, it, like I said, I don't feel like I'm a productive crafter. I don't feel like I produce necessarily that much more than any, anyone else, especially, like I said, this year, I feel like I've done I have 33 completed projects this year, but mostly because I've been doing a lot of blocks and I haven't joined anything yet. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like it, it's one of those, um, I, I don't think what I do is really all that different than what a lot of other people do. I probably approach it maybe slightly differently. Um, but if this helps, you know, let me know. Cause I, I enjoy sharing with you guys the things that I do. I just, a lot of times don't feel like these are that informative. I think a lot of, a lot of times these are just common sense for how my brain works, but that could just be I'm wired backwards. So anyway, you guys, I hope that was useful understanding the concept of the, the travel project and what I mean when I say travel projects. And I hope some of you put together the notions pouches so you can literally just have these circulating around and they just stay packed and ready to go. I don't ever take anything out of these. And they're, they're simple. They're very, very simple. And they're made to be simple just so we can, uh, you know, run out the door. And if it's a knit project, it works for a knit project. If it's a crochet project, it works for a crochet project. Like it's just, they, so anyway, you guys, I hope you are having a wonderful, fantastic day. As always, I love you guys and I will see you guys real soon. Bye guys.